Can vaping ever be eco-friendly? Last year, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism found that we throw away two disposable vapes a second in the UK. We've sat down with climate activist and vape crusader, Laura Young. I'm Laura, I'm currently in Dundee in Scotland and I'm an environmental campaigner and scientist. These are single-use disposable electronic devices, things that are marketed to be used once and then thrown away. And that to me was bonkers. As well as Dan and Taylor from Oxford Vapors to try and suss out whether or not we can quit smoking while saving the planet. I'm, I'm Dan Greenall, uh, the owner of Oxford Vapors and founder, along with my father. And to date, I believe the company has helped approximately 15,000 people stop smoking. Litter is a problem in general, no matter what it is. Of course, these are very bad pieces of litter, but actually it's what it represents. And that is the millions that are sold every single week. And so not only are we seeing them as litter, but of course we are seeing millions of these being sent to landfill. You know, we've just had England and Wales ban certain single use plastic items, mm -hmm. but then we're still selling these more destructive single use items. There are carbon neutral disposable vapes out there, but people aren't buying them because they're not looking for an eco-friendly solution. The answer of can you make vaping eco-friendly depends on your definition of eco-friendly. So if you want something that's carbon neutral, which is currently the stance of being eco-friendly, basically, then yes, it's already been done, but people aren't using, they're not choosing to use it. But when you walk into your local convenience shop, the first thing you now see is a display of colourful packaging um, showing all these different types of vapes that are available to buy. They don't specify how you're supposed to dispose of these. They are sold using the word disposable. And I think to you and me and most people, disposable means you just chuck it away. You just put it in the bin. Because if something's sold as recyclable, I'm gonna look and see how do I recycle it? Is it paper, metal, plastic, what is it? But if something's sold as disposable, you think, okay, it just means chuck it in the regular bin. But of course we know that this is just putting all of the problem onto the consumer. They're being sold something that they think is disposable and actually it's a lot of faff to get it to the right place, to get it recycled. And I think that's where we need a lot more education, but also a lot more from the companies. Unfortunately, there's just too many processes and existing um, sort of commercial patterns and, and roads that prevent you from going completely eco-friendly no matter what you do. When it comes to single-use devices, as a sector, we are all trying to create uh, basically a recycling system. This is at least work that's being done through the UK VIA, which I'm a director of. But we, we want a solution. We believe there's a definitely a place for disposables within the industry. Banning is just the simplest way to deal with this problem. Rather than trying to come up with some complex way of getting people to return them and recycle them that causes extra work somewhere down the line, actually we can just nip it in the bud.